Hey everyone, it's Holly, and today I'm going to be doing my 2020 year in review. Even though it is already February, but you know what? I was really excited to look over all the books that I read and just kind of go over what were my favorites, what were my least favorites, and just kind of give you all of my thoughts surrounding the books that I read. So I read 46 books last year, which I think is insane because it really doesn't feel like I read that many. And my goal was 50 books. That's how close I was. That's okay. I was close enough that I was still really happy. And going off of my Goodreads page, it looks like I read 16,219 pages. And the average book length that I read was 345 pages, which, yes, seems extremely accurate because 300 to 350 pages usually is my comfort zone with books. And it looks like my average rating is a 3.8. I feel like that's a really fair average because it's like... Not quite four star average, but it's really close to that. So everything I read was just kind of mostly at least enjoyable, so that's good. So starting off at the first book that I read in 2020 was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. And shockingly, I gave that one four out of five stars on Goodreads. I was kind of surprised about that because I was thinking it was going to be a five star read. That is a young adult retelling of A Christmas Carol. And I just remember this pulled so many emotions out of me. I was fully invested in the world and the characters and I loved the protagonist because she really goes through a lot of development being such an unlikable and evil person but she really learns in the afterlife how to be a better person and really gets this close-knit group of friends and I adored it so much this is one of those books that was just so bittersweet. It had such a sweet love story in it as well. Oh, and now looking at my review, it looks like I docked a star because of the overuse of the word like. And also apparently it would just over explain things in parentheses that the reader knows and it kind of felt like it was dumbing down the reader a little bit. So that makes a lot of sense. But either way, this is the kind of book that I would love to reread one day. So clearly I loved it. Next was the first book in the Polar Bear Explorers Club series by Alex Bell. This is another one that I gave a four out of five stars for. This is a middle grade polar fantasy about a girl who isn't allowed to be an explorer because she is a girl, but she kind of scoots her way in there and ends up being one of the first explorers on this snowy mountain, trying to discover what is hidden because their map doesn't go any further than just a certain area. This was such a feel good, adorable kind of read with so many likable characters and these kids were just such a blast to read about and all of their bickering and just their fun, crazy moments. There are evil, savage cabbages in this book. There were also so many magical beings. It was a little overwhelming when I first started the book because I was like, okay, I get it. You've got a whole bunch of magical stuff going on in your world. but no, it kind of calms down a little bit, but it is honestly some of the most creative, unique, different kinds of mystical beings that I've ever seen in books before. So truly, Alex Bell is a very creative author. Then I read Skyward and Starsight by Brandon Sanderson, which both of those are a YA series that is sci-fi, almost with like a dystopian kind of feel to it. At least Skyward is. So I'm going to talk about Skyward first. Obviously, I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This was the perfect setup for where we were going into the series. It went through Spensa and her trying to become a pilot, but all of these challenges are thrown her way to make it nearly impossible. And she fights her way through, and I also forgot to mention that they are also fighting this alien space force. They've been doing it for as long as they can remember because on their planet Detritus, it is like all underground and they can't really do anything or go anywhere because of these unknown people who are just trying to annihilate them and they don't know why. So they're kind of just trapped. And that's what this whole pilot school is for because they're trying to fight this enemy. So this was the perfect setup. It definitely has a little bit more of a YA feel to it than the second book, but this was one of my all-time favorite books ever. This is the reason I have realized that I love science fiction. So then going into Star Sight. That was another 5 out of 5 star read. That is literally my all-time favorite book I have ever read and that is saying a lot. It just goes the extra mile. You have all of your lovable characters that 
are just literally my favorite characters ever. I just connected so well with the story and with Spensa, and we got to expand on this universe so much more. If you're a fan of Sanderson, you know that his world building is extreme, and this one goes there. And this is just the beginning. There's still two more books and three more novellas, so I think this world isn't even scratching the surface of what it's going to be, which just blows my mind. Then I jumped into Explorers on Witch Mountain, which is the second book in the Polar Bear Explorers Club series by Alex Bell. I gave this one a three out of five stars. This one, I was hoping for a little bit more fall atmosphere just because it is Witch Mountain, and I believe it did take place during the fall. Fall, I'm pretty sure and it just didn't really give me those vibes. The story was kind of bland It was a little bit more predictable and I felt like the characters were a little dulled down in this one They just weren't as exciting. I don't know what it was about this one. It just didn't hit the mark for me However, I do feel like this book taught so many incredible life lessons, especially for young kids So this one went a little bit more on the serious side and maybe that's why it just lost its grip on me because I loved the humor the adventure the snow and the bickering that's what I enjoyed about the first First one. So when the second one toned it down, took it a little bit more seriously, I think that just wasn't my personal taste, but somebody else might really thoroughly enjoy it more because of that. And then I read The Candy Cane Caper by Josie S. Kilpack. I gave this a whopping two out of five stars. This is a cozy culinary mystery about a girl who is at her neighbor's house and her neighbor is telling her about all these fancy ornaments that are worth like $40,000 and then suddenly she notices that a bunch of them have been stolen. She doesn't want her neighbor to realize this. She is blind so she isn't fully aware of what is on the tree. So she's trying to figure out who stole them and get them back before she notices. In theory, you would think this one would be a lot of fun, but maybe culinary mysteries just aren't for me. The recipes were amazing. I made some lemon cookies out of this and it was fantastic. I do feel like this was perfect for the holiday season and I did have a little bit of fun with it and trying to put the pieces together, but it wasn't mind blowing. And I think the biggest issue for me on this one is that they kept talking down to people who are in my age group. And I'm just not a fan of people who look at themselves above others just because they're older. Like I get it, respect your elders and stuff, but this was just a little bit belittling, in my opinion. A Wedding in December by Sarah Morgan. You can tell I was very much in a wintry phase at this point, and I rated this one a three out of five stars, which I'm honestly kind of shocked about because when I think back on this book, I remember thoroughly enjoying it. This is about one sister who, on a whim, is planning a wedding with her new fiance, and it's happening during Christmas, very last minute, and it's in the snowy mountains of Colorado, so the family all takes a trip there there, but what they don't know is that the other sister is not happy with this decision at all and she's trying to ruin the wedding to stop it from happening because she thinks it's a bad idea. And then you have the parents who have been in the midst of getting a divorce and they think this is the worst time to tell their daughters this. So there's a whole bunch of different plot lines going on and there is a fake marriage plot line which was my favorite part of this entire story between the husband and the wife who are in the middle of getting a divorce but of course the the new-to-be mother-in-law decides that she's gonna treat them on all these fancy date packages not knowing that they are planning on getting divorced so super awkward the awkward moments in this book were so so awkward there's one specifically that had me laughing out loud and I wish I wrote more notes on here because I didn't write anything and I have absolutely no idea why it was only a three star so there must have been some discrepancies in the writing maybe that I didn't really vibe with I have no idea, but I just remember having fun with this one, and there's some reason that I docked a couple stars. It's a mystery. This is why I need to write reviews on Goodreads. North Child by Edith Pateau, and I gave this a four out of five stars. 
This is a middle grade or young adult polar fantasy. I think it's somewhere in between there. I keep seeing different conflicting age groups on this one. This is actually based off of a fairy tale. I can't recall the name of it right now, but it's kind of similar to Beauty and the Beast. It's about a girl who wants to explore her whole life. It's all she's wanted, but her mom is very superstitious, and that is not the daughter that she raised. Her daughter will not be exploring, but you know what? A polar bear is very insistent and keeps showing up on their doorstep saying that she needs to come with him to save something. And that's all I'm going to say, but it was so much fun. I really enjoyed this one and I feel like it was really cute, very atmospheric. This one is very slow and beautiful and more lyrical versus the other polar fantasies that I have on here. Oh, and this is actually 3.5 out of 5 star read actually. And I love my review for this because I go, the first thing I said when I finished and closed this book was aww. <laughs> I just remember it being so heartwarming and I really loved the ending and it was just really sweet and cute and I really liked it. Explorers on Black Ice Bridge, which is the third book in the Polar Bear Explorers Club trilogy. I think it's a trilogy anyways and I gave that one a four out of five stars. Definitely like this one more than the second book. This one is obviously exploring the Black Ice Bridge. This is another one that took it a little bit more seriously, but in a very good way. I was extremely excited about an LGBTQ plus character that I was not expecting. So I forgot to mention there is a companion series coming out for this one. Actually, it just came out. Oh my God, it just came out like yesterday and I ordered it and I'm so excited, but it's probably gonna take a while because it's from the UK. But this one was the perfect setup for the companion series. Series. This was the best book in the trilogy so far. This just took it so much deeper into this world and it's just so magical and wonderful and I love these characters so much. There is a flamingo named Melville in this story and he is my spirit animal. I love him. He is everything and I just am so happy that he was a part of this story and I also really liked that the ending of this one was not predictable at all. I'm really invested in the series and can't wait to see more from this author in general. Then I went into Bear Town by Frederick Bachman and I gave this one a four out of five stars. This takes place in a small town that is centralized around hockey. Hockey means everything to this town. So much so that when the star player of the hockey team does something very horrible. It kind of gets skated under the rug because he's the best player and they don't want anything to happen to their record. It is so messed up. It is so dark. It is so raw and real, but it's also very beautiful in some moments. This is such an important read, such a devastating read, and it got really difficult at times to power through, but I'm so glad that I did. It was so Good. This was definitely the most emotional book that I've read by Frederick Bachman so far, but I've only read two of them, so that's really not saying that much. But either way, I really enjoyed this one. I don't know when I'm going to be picking up the sequel because this hit me hard and I don't want to put myself through it again. <laughs> then I went into The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I gave this one a three out of five stars. This one takes place after a wedding when everybody gets sick with food poisoning. So of course the best man and the maid of honor get sent on the bride and groom's honeymoon because they're not able to go on their own honeymoon but there's a twist because these two people absolutely hate each other. So they go onto this trip and obviously you have a hate to love. Now the first half of this book, I loved so much. I was having a blast. It is so awkward. I was laughing out loud. And then all of a sudden the second half of the book added in some unnecessary drama. It just didn't make me feel good. It just took away all of the fun of that first half of the book. So it wasn't really that enjoyable to me in the end. I don't know. I still had fun with this one and I still recommend it for a very perfect tropical beachy kind of read. But just keep in mind that you don't get that throughout the whole book. You only get the snippet and then it's done. And then you get into yuckiness. So <laughs> there's that. Bent Heavens by Daniel Krauss, which I gave a four out of five stars. This is a YA horror sci-fi blend. It's a whole lot of weird. This one's about a girl whose dad 
is kind of going crazy. He um, is suddenly naked in town one day saying that he was abducted by aliens and then all of a sudden he goes missing. Now in those months that he's been kind of going crazy but he was at home, he was making all different kinds of alien traps with his daughter. So this protagonist and her best friend have been taking care of these traps ever since her dad went missing and then one day something is caught in it and oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, if, just have an open mind if you plan on reading this one. It is messed up, it is so disturbing, and I need more. This ending was insane, and it was such a loose end. I want answers, I just want to see the craziness that ensues from this. And I saw that a lot of people hated this book. I don't know, maybe my tastes are just really odd, but I actually really enjoyed this one. But I also feel like that's due to the major plot twist. I think it just blew me away and made me love this book so much more because the more I think about it, yeah, I don't even remember the protagonist's name, so I don't think the characterization was done the best in this one, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston, and I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This one's about a girl who walks in hearing that her boyfriend says he wants a break from her. So she kind of runs out of there, she's wallowing away in despair, and she ends up stuck going on this family trip that she always goes to every year for Christmas, and they end up setting her on ten blind dates. Every family member picks and chooses somebody they think is good for her, and then she goes on those dates, and they are absolutely hilarious. I had a blast reading all of the different dates in this one and I just really loved her grandmother's house. It was so cozy. Like I want to go there. I want to know this family. They were just so much fun to read about and I do have to say this one is insanely predictable and I also feel like there was this unnecessary side plot that really didn't add anything fun to the story. It had to do with like childbirth. I'm pretty sure. I'm a mom but I still wasn't really excited about that premise at all. I was here for just a Christmas funny story, but at the same point, I mean, I'm glad that she at least tried to add something there to incorporate more to the story. Either way, if you're looking for something that's just fun and lighthearted and you really want to get into the Christmas spirit, probably more next year when it's actually Christmas, this is the perfect one because all of the dates are Christmas themed and it was just such a blast. I can definitely tell this was my February month because then I go into Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is another young adult contemporary that I adored. This is one of my all-time favorite romance novels. Ever. This one's about a girl who goes to Italy with her father after her mother passes away and upon her mother's passing she gets a journal that's from her mother that describes all of her experiences in Italy for the first time. So while she's exploring Italy herself, she's also getting her mother's insight of how she explored Italy for the first time and she also meets a boy there of course and like some friends. A love story ensues in Italy and it was so adorable. I had so many warm and fuzzy feelings after this one and wow there's also some other plot line that is oof oof it hit it hit and it was emotional this was so well-rounded and I'm surprised they gave it four to five stars. I was wondering why it was a four to five stars until I realized that there's basically cheating and an obnoxious miscommunication trope. So that definitely makes sense that I would dock a star off for that. That sounds exactly like what I would do. Then after loving Love and Gelato so much, I decided to read Love and Luck and I hated it. I gave it a two out of five stars. This had none of the magic of the first book and this is a companion series by the way so you don't have to read them in the order but at the same point I think you should just skip this book altogether because it ruined everything for me. This one's about a girl who ruins her some family member's wedding because she all of a sudden decides to tackle her brother down a hill during the ceremony over mysterious reasons and then you find out what it is later and then you realize that her brother is actually a really good guy who was doing something relatively nice for her. So. It just fell flat for me. It had none of the excitement of discovering another country. It had like sprinkles of it, but it definitely wasn't as deep as Love and Gelato was and there wasn't like another subplot or like emotional, impactful kind of story to it. So, meh. 
wasn't fun to me at all. Then I went into The Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown and I gave this one a four out of five stars. This is a graphic novel about conjoined twins where one day when they are working at a freak show, there is a doctor who shows up and says that he can split them. One of the sisters really wants to and one of the sisters thinks that is a horrible idea. So one of the sisters is very bold and assertive and very outgoing, but the other sister is a little bit more shy, quiet, and just does whatever the other sister says. So the surgery ends up happening because of course that one sister kind of won because she's a little bit more assertive and the other sister ends up not making it. This one actually, as dark as it sounds, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is very dark. It is also so touching and sweet, the love story in it. I really loved, especially for a graphic novel, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to portray some kind of emotion, but this one was just adorable and I feel like if you liked American American Horror Story Freak Show, and you know what the message behind that one was. This is very much the same kind of message, very different story, but it was just interesting to see somebody go from being a conjoined sister, being seen as a freak, and then when she gets that surgery and she's just one person again, there's nothing unique about her in this freak show world anyways, obviously. So it was a really interesting concept and I'm really glad that I read that one. Then I dove into Phasma by Delilah S. Dawson. I gave this one a four out of five stars. This is a Captain Phasma origin story from Star Wars. This was so much fun. I ended up loving a character that I never knew about before. Here he is, Captain Cardinal and all of his adorable glory. I don't know why he's adorable. He's just basically a red trooper, but he's adorable. Put him right there so everybody can see him. He kind of matches the whole, oh, never mind, my ring light makes that look awful. This one had everything that you would love from a Star Wars movie, but this was my first Star Wars book that I've ever read before, and I'm a pretty new Star Wars fan. I definitely wasn't following it for years or anything, but Phasma is a stone cold B-I-T-C-H. I got my son here, gotta tone it down, but she is, I don't even know. I don't even have words, but she's a very intense character to read about. I highly recommend it. The only downfall about this one is I actually liked the other story arc a little bit more than Captain Phasma's origin story. I liked all the supporting characters. I liked Captain Cardinal. There were just so many more elements that I wish were explored a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it is a Phasma origin story, so I wouldn't expect it to really focus on many other people. Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. And shockingly, I gave this one a four out of five stars on Goodreads, apparently. I'm confused because when I think back on it, it is easily a five star read. This is an adult fantasy novel. And this one is just so tricky to explain. But if you were a fan of any Brandon Sanderson, I do think you're still going to like this one. I think the reason that this one stood out to me so much is because I really loved the characters. I loved the prince and his best friend. They were the most iconic duo ever. This friend that he meets along the way on this really, really dark, intense journey in this worn down city where they're basically zombies essentially and I loved their dynamic. I loved the magic system and this one had one of my all-time favorite book tropes ever in it but if I said it it would give away a pretty big spoiler but this one was a little bit more religion based so if that kind of bothers you in books it's not like real religion or anything it's these religions that Brandon Sanderson always kind of incorporates in his books I do feel like this one was very heavily centralized because one of the main characters we follow is a priest and say no more say no more it's so good so freaking good. I don't care what anybody says. This is still one of my favorite books by Brandon Sanderson, even though it's supposed to be his worst. I disagree. The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Wow. Okay. So this was a guilty pleasure read for me because this was pitched as like morally gray characters. She's going to kill the prince and take his place and his money and all this. But then of course it's a hate to love, but they keep saying that they're these bad characters, but like 
they're not. But this one was so much fun with all of the royalty and riches and dresses and I just liked the interactions with the characters. I think it was just one of those books that was just fancy. And I also really liked the female friendships in this one as well. In my opinion, it was like a slightly darker version of the first book in the selection series, which is backwards. It has nothing to do with the whole bachelor aspect to it, but I don't know, it just had that fancy royalness feel to it. A Beginning at the End by Mike Chen. I gave this one a three out of five stars, which I feel like is a little bit unfair because this one takes place in a world that has been wiped out almost completely by a pandemic. This book came out literally about not even a month after the pandemic actually started. So that's kind of terrifying because I feel like this was a little bit too accurate. This seriously felt like I was reading our lives playing out, but in a more apocalyptic survival story kind of feel to it. There is a group of characters and they band together. They're very unlikely to be together and I really liked their dynamics and I think it was done so well. I really did enjoy this one still. I'm fully aware that this was a very well written and good book and it was meant to spark hope, but unfortunately with the events that are going on right now in our world, it didn't feel hopeful to me because I'm like, that's not how I want our world to pan out, like at all. But if we weren't going through it, I probably would have been like, wow, so amazing. I'm so happy that they feel this way, but. No, unfortunately not. Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is a young adult sci-fi novel that I gave five out of five stars. Now, don't get me wrong, the beginning of this book was over the top, trying to be funny. I did not vibe with it at all, but by the end of it, I fell in love with these characters, the world, the banter, and even the humor. It somehow stuck to me. I think maybe it just got better as it went on, but this is a space heist story that is a little bit typical to the YA sci-fi kind of thing that goes on where it's like the leader, the nerd, the jock, like one of those. So I just don't like when books are pitched like that and unfortunately this one has it literally on the inside dust jacket or even the back. I don't remember but either way I ended up actually really liking this one. The ending of this book was the most phenomenal, incredible, I adored it. I loved it and I'm so looking forward to move on with this series. Fractured Tide by Leslie Lutz. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This was supposed to be a genre bendy sci-fi kind of story, but in my eyes this was definitely just a survival story trying to be pitched as like a creature story, but it wasn't at all. The creature was not a prominent part of the story and I feel like maybe I would have enjoyed it a little bit more if I had better expectations going into it beforehand. I think what I really liked about this book the most was the family dynamics and the friendship dynamics and just the overall survival story trying to survive on this abandoned island and it kind of touches on this girl's relationship with her father and her mother. It was good, it just wasn't one of the best, most memorable books I've ever read. The Humans by Matt Haig, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one is about an alien who is sent to Earth as a punishment to kill a man who has discovered something that they do not believe humans are ready for. So while he is pretending to be this human, he basically took over his body and everything, but he ends up kind of realizing what it's like to be human. There is a dog in man best friendship in this one and I loved it so much. This one was just so funny and cute and happy and it gets a little bit more dark and serious but at the end of the day it had such a good message and I just really felt good reading this one. You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. This one I barely remember. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. This is an adult romance novel. It's basically just about a couple who drifts away from each other and they're starting to kind of hate each other and then they find their way back to each other. This one, I think the biggest complaint to me was that there was no character development. The main girl, Naomi, ends up exactly the way that she is in the beginning, and I can just see this relationship going in a full circle over and over again until they get divorced one day, because there was something at the end that was way overblown 
and dramatic and it really kind of showed her true colors but it was still really funny and quirky and I really liked the flower shop feel to it as well so I feel like a lot of people really love this one this just wasn't my favorite more breaker by Brandon Sanderson this was a five out of five stars this is an adult fantasy with color magic using your breaths there's gods there's royalty there's assassins this has everything there's so much humor there's a talking sword i'm obsessed with this one i love it oh and there's also a god who doesn't believe that he's actually a god this is just so incredible i can't even say anything more about this one because i'll end up talking about it for another like 40 minutes so i'm just gonna leave it there the final empire by brandon sanderson which is the first book in the mistborn trilogy i gave this one a five out of five stars i love this world love the alamancy magic with the metals and i really liked the characters and everything that you typically like in a brandon sanderson novel i just think that this one i don't connect with the characters as well as I did in the other books of his. The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson I gave a four out of five stars to. Even though this one was way more fast-paced and so much more happens, it gets really intense, the stakes are really high. Then of course there's Sazed, who I love so much. He's so awesome. More character development. I just feel like there was this unnecessary love triangle kind of thing that ended quite abruptly. Like, I understand why that story arc was there, but I don't really like the way that it was executed, so that was kind of a reason that it was kind of a bummer for me. Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This is a middle grade horror novel. This one was terrifying with the most creepy pictures in it. It reminded me of like a haunted Alice in Wonderland. It was just a lot of fun. It really had me on the edge of my seat and I read it in one sitting. His writing is so different and unique than anything I've ever read before. It is so incredibly atmospheric. It just gave me that Tim Burton kind of feel. I really, really liked it. It was just spooky. I don't know. Ooh, and the food was incredible in this one. It just sounded so yummy. The Companion by Katie Allender. This is a four out of five star read for me. This was an incredibly messed up story that was just filled with suspense and mystery, even though the main mystery is a little bit obvious. It was kind of bothering me that the protagonist was so blind to what was happening because it was kind of clear. But overall, I really liked the atmosphere of this book and I think that's why I rated it so highly. It definitely had that American Horror Story Asylum kind of feel to it. I know I just keep referring to all my books as like American Horror Story, but it did. This book read like black and white to me almost, like this grayscale kind of eerie thing. I don't know. It was just enjoyable because there were so many dark, creepy, suspenseful moments, but then there were so many warm, happy, wonderful moments that I really liked. And there was also a little love story in there, which I can see why a lot of people think it was unnecessary. But for me personally, I think it was just nice to have a little bit of a tie to like the real world being stuck in this house. But then again, maybe it would have been even more eerie if we didn't get any piece of the outside world. And this one's about a girl who is in a group home who all of a sudden gets adopted by this extremely wealthy, odd family. And pretty quickly she realizes that she was only picked to be adopted because they wanted her to be a companion for their daughter who is not doing very well. She kind of just stares off into space in her room, doesn't talk to anyone and doesn't really do anything. So they wanted a companion for her. That's not creepy at all. I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reed. I gave this one like a three, three and a half star rating. This is a thriller, I want to say. I'm just... I'm not really going to pitch this book as anything. It's adult and just know that it's genre bendy. It's weird. It'll make you feel awkward, unsettled. It's about a girl who's thinking of ending things with her boyfriend when she is on her way over to meet his parents for the first time. Weird experiences, but once you actually know what this story means by the end, Oh my gosh, it'll blow you away. It was insane. It is intense. It's a very intense read. And definitely not for everybody. Curse the Day by Annabelle Chase. Gave this one a two star rating. This is about a girl whose car ends up going off of a cliff. This super hot guy that she thinks is about to commit suicide shows up and saves the day. And then what do you know? She's stuck in 
basically Halloween Town, a town filled with different magical creatures and she's not able to leave and she's trying to solve a murder mystery. There was hardly any murder mystery. This one was just not that fun to be honest. It was fun in the beginning. I really had those Halloween Town kind of feels. I liked seeing all those different characters and creatures, but pretty soon into the book I was like, okay, this is just a girl pining after hot supernatural guys with the most obvious mystery I'd like ever, ever, ever. They Threw Us Away by Daniel Krauss. I give this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is a middle grade horror novel, but I definitely feel like if you are an adult, you can really thoroughly appreciate this one. It is so heartwarming and heartbreaking and Oh, just all of the emotions. This one just touched on so many important day-to-day -day topics in the perspective of teddy bears who are so innocent and wholesome, but they get abandoned and they don't know why and they're out of their boxes. And it's kind of like a survival story with these teddy bears and they just want to be happy. They want to find their forever home so that they can forever sleep, which is as dark as you would think it is. This ends on such a freaking cliffhanger and I am so ready for the next book. It is going to be a wild adventure. Also, it is very, very gory, even though it is teddy bears with stuffing. Something Wicked This Way comes by Ray Bradbury. I gave this one a three out of five stars. I listened to this one on audiobook actually and I'm kind of shocked at the three out of five star rating because I really liked this one. It is so freaking creepy. I don't even really know how to explain it. It's about this circus that randomly comes into town, kind of like the night circus where no one really knows why or how, but it's there. And these two boys get lured in to this really creepy thing. We got some creepy circusy kind of carnival people and they are basically just trying to steal everybody's youth you know, normal things. So the three star rating probably comes into play because the writing style is very, very odd, but the story is so incredible, so eerie, and I really wanna watch the movie for this one. It's just really impossible to find, but when I do, I'm gonna be watching the shit out of that. The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury, and I gave this one a two out of five stars. This is about friends who are trying to save their friend on Halloween after he keeps getting swept away by weird things and they kind of get to explore different Halloween cultures. This one just went way too quickly for me and it was a little bit vague. I didn't like the writing style, so it was just not hitting the mark for me, unfortunately, because I do feel like this would have been everything I would have loved, but I just didn't really connect with the story and yeah. Bites of Terror by Liz Reed and Jimmy Reed. This is a food horror graphic novel and it was incredible. This one is an anthology with all different kinds of gory messed up food stories with some twists. I was really excited about that and not expecting that at all. I ended up loving this one. When I started it, I was like honestly confused as to why I was reading it because I'm like, this is just not even going to be good. Why would I spend money on this? And no, I loved it and I highly recommend it and it's actually a lot of fun. If you like food, you like puns, and you like horror and graphic novels, I think you'll like this one, I hope, if you have like bad sense of humor like I do anyway. The Sea Was Angry by Armand Rose. Was Amelia. This was actually a DNF, so I have it on my Goodreads list basically to just keep tabs that that is a book that I tried out and it failed for me, but that one I didn't add on to my final count of how many books I read or anything. Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marino Garcia. I gave this one a four out of five stars. This one I think definitely would have been a five out of five star read for me if it wasn't for the weird rapist molestation kind of feels to it. I just wasn't really a fan of that, but I did love, I loved the atmosphere of this book. I loved the mushrooms. I loved this creepy gothic home and the relationship between the protagonist and her cousin. This was just so much fun to me. And before this book, I never really dove into gothic literature and I am a sucker for it. A lot of people didn't like the slow burn, weird kind of story. This is everything that I loved. I definitely want to check out more gothic kind of novels because this one was just so 
fresh to me and I really liked it and the weird fungus body horror stuff ugh, it's so creepy but so good I don't know another one that's definitely not everybody's cup of tea gonna throw that out there not everyone is going to like this one it's a little bit of like an acquired taste. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. Wasn't a fan of this one. I really don't understand the hype, unfortunately. I'm gonna go hide under a rock now. I just felt very bored reading this one. I didn't connect with Addie LaRue. Yes, I felt bad for her that she was stuck living forever, but nobody could remember her. But all she seemed to care about was just sleeping with people and wanting to make a mark on the world, which, like, I understand wanting to make your mark on the world and wanting to be known and finding bits and pieces of art to kind of put out into the universe. But I wanted this one to be more about experiences and building on relationships. And the relationship done between her and this like devil character could have been fleshed out so much more, but it wasn't. I liked the writing in this one and that's about it. And the concept was good, but wasn't my favorite. Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. I gave this one five stars and this is a young adult horror novel. This is the book that started it all. I mean, you could almost argue that Mexican Gothic was because it being a gothic horror, but this one made me realize that I'm not that grossed out by gore in books as long as I have the warning for it anyways. This was just a very fun slasher horror novel that really gave a nod to many other horror stories that are out there in a way that wasn't like copying or anything, but it was just done so well. I had fun. This had a lot of dark humor sprinkled throughout it, as well as some political views, which I was kind of shocked. Like normally I don't want politics in my books, but I do think it was important to have these discussions added to the story. It was so much more than just like senseless killings even though yes there was a lot of that but I do feel like there was a bigger picture and the epilogue <laughs> the epilogue all systems read by Martha Wells and I gave this one a four out of five stars this is a sci-fi novella I just realized the way that the light is coming in here is making me look like a like a light shade. I was shocked at how much this was a hard sci-fi novel. This one pretty deep into planetary exploration and I was so excited for it and I'm so ready to read more from this. I wish I could have given it five stars because I truly loved the characters and the world, but with novellas you just can't get enough backstory. You can't get enough depth in world building. So I think that's what the rest of the series is going to do for me. And I do think they actually start turning into books instead of novellas. And I think that that's when I'm really going to be fully invested in into them fully and can five star it, I hope. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I gave this one 3.5 stars. This is another gothic horror. I think it's supposed to be considered as, I would consider it more as like a thriller. And the hype for this one was just up here. People were loving it. This was their favorite book of the year. And I wish I could have felt that way about this one. I do think that the writing is incredible. This had me sucked in from the start. And this one was just a very addictive read for me. I did not want to put it down. And I love that about it. And actually I got nightmares from this one, which I was kind of surprised because it's not creepy. The book that her dad wrote in the book, Bookception, that one was creepy and I wish that that book was like the actual book that we were reading, but either way I still really want to read more from Riley Sager because his writing definitely slaps, like it's good. Secret Santa by Andrew Schaefer. This one was a four star read for me and this was a Christmassy horror novel that takes place in the publishing industry. I love this one. I actually wasn't expecting this to go as deep into the mythology that it was going to and I had a lot of fun with it. It wasn't the best book I've ever read in my life but it was funny. I was just having a really good time while reading it. I liked the characters and I just loved learning about the publishing industry as a whole from the inside. So I definitely recommend reading that one if you're really looking for a horror book around the holidays. Ink and Sigil by Kevin Hearn. I gave this one five stars, one of my favorite books of this year. This is a fantasy novel that takes place in Scotland with a bunch of Scottish slang and a lovable protagonist who is an old man who kicks some 
ass and has a very lovely white mustache that he's very proud of and the more he speaks the more people hate him so he actually does sigil magic with fancy inks that he creates I loved the world loved the characters the Scottish slang really made me feel immersed into Scotland and there were so many other different kinds of cultures there was an LGBTQ plus main character I just adored this one this one made me feel good and happy and it was actually a little bit more violent than I was expecting it to be and it was just a really good fantasy that I'm really excited to go into the rest of the series once it's out. The Visitor by Sergio Gomez. This is a sci-fi horror novella that I gave four stars to. Another Christmassy, gory, violent, insane novel. This one is definitely not for the faint of heart, but I really enjoyed it and I feel like in this tiny 80 page book, I was so invested in it and I just really wanted to know more about the characters and the world and also these creatures. The sci-fi element to this was wild and vicious and horrible. This was honestly the first horror book that made me squeamish and like just want to like hold my stomach and like oh I think it's because it's like a little bit of organ gore I can't do that don't talk about organs like my intestines are here to stay <laughs> I still really enjoyed it though nonetheless An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson I gave this one a three out of five stars this is a standalone YA fantasy that basically was too reminiscent of a court of thorns and roses to me it has the different season kingdoms and the fae and an angry broody man who takes her away and a protagonist who loves art and a lot of people really liked this one I do have to say that I liked the writing the writing was captivating and beautiful and atmospheric and she's an incredible author but I didn't really like this story for this one it was predictable for me and I wish I could have better thoughts on it but I just don't in holidays by Christina Lauren I gave this one a five out of five stars this is an adult contemporary romance taking place in the holidays this is simply just something if you want light fluffy reads that are just gonna make you feel good there's not too much to it it's just something that's very festive and gets you in the holiday spirit and it gets you a lot of good laughs and that's what I really appreciated about this one because that's what I really wanted at the time and it delivered the 12 dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless who I gave this one a whopping one star one that I thought I was going to love another holiday romance that I thought was going to be really cute, kind of similar to 10 blind dates, but no. I just didn't like this one. I didn't like the dates, didn't like the characters, it was very info dumpy. It just wasn't fun. Five Total Strangers by Natalie D. Richards. I gave this one three stars and this is a young adult thriller taking place during a snowstorm. This one definitely gave me all of the wintry, creeped out, kind of isolated feelings and I really liked it. It definitely made me feel uneasy because you never really knew who to trust. Everybody was kind of weird and awkward and I couldn't really say that it was predictable although I did predict what it was going to be I feel like I predicted that everybody was insane in this entire book so technically I would have predicted it right no matter what I feel like if there was a little bit more insight to the characters and I do wish that there was a little bit less dryness to the story I just wanted a little bit more of a spark I don't know how to explain what I mean, but it was just missing something, a little bit of oomph. And the last book that I read in 2020 was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This was a five star read for me. This is a young adult mystery, suspense, family drama filled with lots of puzzles and family dynamics and secrets. It was so good. I love this one thoroughly and completely and I will always recommend this one. There is a small love triangle between her and the brothers, but for whatever reason, I just loved it because I loved the brothers. And I just love trying to figure out the riddles. The protagonist was such an incredible character to read about. She was extremely strong-willed and funny, and she was very smart as well. So I just really had a fun time reading that one, and I'm so looking forward to reading more from that author because this is the exact kind of book that I just really, really love to read. So that is everything that I read 
in 2020. This was a pretty good reading year for me despite everything that went on in the world, so I'm really proud of that, especially because I didn't really start going back into booktube until around the fall. So I'm kind of surprised that I read this many books, and I have so much faith that I'll be able to hit my 75 this year, even if I'm already really far behind. We'll get there. Let me know down below what you think about any of these books. I would love to hear your thoughts, and if you've read any of these, or if you plan on reading any of these, I always love to hear what you guys have to say. Please put a like on this video, and also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more bookish content from me. I will see you again soon. Bye!